Sam Presti was a liar, meaning the Oklahoma City Thunder are up next. That he is exactly what I'm going to talk about. He said they borrowed wins from the future. He's a liar. That's what I'm, I'm no, you, you You think I'm kidding. Uh, the, 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 so I want to give you the exact verbiage that I absolutely love from, I think it was Tim McMahon for ESPN. It was based on uh, Presti's, uh, one of the two media availabilities he has all year, which was the preseason one where he talked for like, that's two Just more media sp- availabilities than the Knicks front office has. Sp- spoke <laughs> extemporaneously for like, I don't know, three days, give or take. Uh, he said that uh, of the fact that the, the Thunder improved by 16 wins last year over the previous season, which is like, that's a lot of wins. That does not happen often. He said they uh, hit the 7% high-end bandwidth of possibilities, which I just want to say, if you want to confuse somebody, or just make it so they believe you know more than they do about anything. Just reference, well, you know, the seven percent high end bandwidth of uh, possible outcomes on the spectrum. <laughs> like seven percent high end. I mean, like I just have so many. I want to know: is there a flow chart somewhere in Thunder headquarters that has their like? I, I know what all those words are, but bandwidth doesn't make sense to me in that context. Anyway, this is all to say that he did trick us. We are gullible dummies. And we should have expected the Thunder. Some people did, by the way, to be the darling of the season and to be the team that took the leap, which they are. Uh, and that those 16 wins they got over two years ago's total were like just part of an upward trajectory and not something that is going to pull back. So like I just this team. I, it's they're so young, right? And they still have like a lot of holes to fill on the roster. But just between SGA and Chet and Jalen Williams, they like, I mean, Giddy is like an afterthought. He's been up and down, mostly down this year. I, I just don't see where the fall off comes other than like, y- you know, maybe the, maybe the defense isn't going to be good enough. Maybe the depth becomes an issue, but like this idea that, oh, we borrowed wins or, oh, we exceeded expectations. And, you know, that's just, it's just not accurate. The, like he, <laughs> I don't know if he, if, if Presti believed that when he said it, or if, if it was expectation management, if it was sincere, I mean, either way, it's probably good to under promise and then over deliver, I guess. But um, no, this is not a team that I think borrowed wins. I think this is a team that is going to have enough wins over the next several years that like there will be there will be no talk of of that kind of thing for a long time with this team. This is going to and they clearly don't need it now. This is only going to add nitrous to the national conversation where it's all, when are the Thunder going to push all their chips in. And it's just right now they don't need to push any chips in. We can quibble over certain makeups of the roster or things we'd like to see them do or add, but I see people coming up with fake trades to get them Zach Levine. I'm just like, why, why they don't, don't need them? They don't, they don't need it right now. I think like eventually like maybe some more conventional size up front, like to help improve with their team. But this team is just, they're not finished, but they're definitely more mode to keel said this on a low post. They're more cooked in a good way where it's like, they're not as raw as I think even they were expecting. And I think it's a test. Chet Holmgren is just ready. Yep. And I got into a spirited debate that I thought Wemby would have been my rookie of the year in the moment when I was making the debate because his role is harder. And I still believe his role is harder. But like the optimization of Chet and the way he's just improved, like the stuff he's been able to do off his paint touches, mm-hmm. uh, he was he's the rookie of the year. Oh, right yeah. Now. Right. Like Today, his, right now, I think that's right. So, and well, the Spurs are kind of, I'm interested to see what you came up with them. They're in a little bit of disarray and, and free fall. So it's, if you're going to be Sam Presti too, I don't know if he was purposely trying to lower expectations because that's one job security and two, you don't want to put undue pressure on a core that's still pretty young, but like you're getting to the point where no matter what the Thunder say now, the results are so good, so comprehensive that the expectations and the pressure are coming. They're not just as happy to be in the mixed team anymore. Mm-hmm. They might be internally. That's not going to be the scope. And even the way their fan base can react at times, I mean, this is a compliment. Like there are expectations throughout the fan base now. And I gave them, I think we both hit the under on their win total leading into the season in part because of what Sam Presti said. And like, yep. by the way, they're still doing a shit ton of experimentation. It's like these wins are just coming while they're still, I would say, pretty capably planning for the bigger picture. They've had to integrate other guys into the rotation because they were injured, specifically Jay Will and, and Kendrick Williams. 
this team is scary. I don't know where they are and just if we make an echelon of the best teams in the league, but like, they have a top four seed in the West right now, which isn't easy to do even this early. And all their vitals, it's kind of like last year where, where on paper and the things that they're saying, the Cavaliers aren't supposed to be contenders. But when you look at their statistical vitals, they should be contenders. And like Oklahoma City is just in that. You can't have a top seven offense and a right. top four defense. Fourth on defense, which I just questioned a few minutes ago. For, fourth on defense while being 29th in defensive rebounding yeah, rate, which right. is just like I mean, wild. and just like it's all – there's so much – uh, there's so many possibilities. I don't, I don't know about the, uh, where, where this is on their bandwidth percentage, but like this idea that like, we don't have any idea what kind of player Chet Holmgren is going to be ultimately, or even, you know, three years from now, even right. Like he's, you, you said like, he's in a way better position than when Cause he's been able to just kind of like SGA and, and to a lesser extent, Jalen Williams kind of just run the offense and, and Giddy sets guys up. And Holmgren really has been the beneficiary of like very good teammates, getting him shots where he's just positioned to succeed. But like, I think there's every chance and you, you know, his ball handling, his individual shot creation, his ability to just pump fake and get downhill off a of pick and pop is like, who's to say this guy isn't like number one option, you know, like who's like Lori Markinen you know, level of shooting volume and stuff like that with just nastier drives. And like, there's no telling how good he's going to be by the end of this year, even forget three years from now. I mean, I think SGA is, he's a, he's like a top five ish player in the league right now. I don't know how much better he's going to get, but I think Williams will get better. I think, I mean, like Casey Wallace is going to get better, even though he's making half his threes, like that's going to come down. He might, he might make, they might have two first team all rookies. I, I don't know if Kaysen's going to have the the volume at the end it's of the just day. It's hard because his role can't be that big with these other three guys. And just so. like you know, Wemby's going to be on first team no matter yeah. what, like how inefficient he is, unless something catastrophic happens between now and then. And that's going to be when you're talking about Asar Thompson's going to be in the mix and Keontae George and Bilal Kulabali. There's just there's a this rookie class, by the way, is just absolutely bonkers. Yeah, I just even I mean Isaiah Joe has been one of my Again, if you're going to make a ranking of the best, the most entertaining players to watch, like, yeah, that's where Shea and Chet and Wemby are going to come in. Isaiah Jones is one of my favorite players to watch this yeah. season. It's like his shot has started to fall, but even when it's not, like he's working his ass off on defense. He'll set screens on offense. Like this team is just, there's so many play. I'm, I want to quibble over that. Usman Jay just doesn't get more minutes. And I know he hasn't been, hasn't been great this year. They are so if they are so well positioned, it doesn't make sense. And trying to reconcile that with the immediate results and then expectations that come with, with them, it still does feel like there's warring agendas here between what the Thunder are trying to do internally and what's actually happening on the court. It's not necessarily impacting how they operate, though. So they're not warring. It just it's very abnormal for mm -hmm. the self-described stage that they're in. And again, they're back. Like, Casey Wallace is playing. Yeah. Like, they're backing that up with the experimentation. So, you heard it here first. Thunder the 2024 champs on accident. <laughs> we were tricked.